Welcome to my contribution and also from my side thanks, huge thanks to Andres and the team for the invitation. I think I'm one of the people who flew the longest distance. I'm coming from Zurich. Um, I'm an architect and an urbanist based there and I'm going to be, speak about this book. My co-authors, I have to name them, it's very important, uh, Irini Kasumi, Kis Christiansen, whom some of you may know, and Christian Salewski, and it was published this summer in Rotterdam. Uh, it's, as Max said, the result of our work at the ETH, and we're looking at eight European airports in this book. Um, so at the beginning of the panel, and I hope it's okay for you, I will take you in the periphery of airports. Um, which I'm convinced and I hope I can also convince you is essential for making them work in the long term. As an urban planner, it's this long term that is central to my work and to the viewpoint which I need to give to you. And this is why I would like to uh, start my presentation with a small provocation that I found uh, I should make when combining the words uh, aerial and future. This is a quote from Wikipedia. Air travel is fascinating and it's essential to how our globalized world works. And by our scientific knowledge that we have at the moment, it's a fundamental threat to our common life in our common home. And although this citation from Wikipedia may be a bit exaggerating, it has a point. By everything we know at the moment, if humans were rational about the future, we would stop flying immediately and stopped doing a lot of other things. Nevertheless, I flew here. I contradicted myself, and I think that is because we live in a contradictory time, a time of transition from one way of living to another way of living. What we experienced in the last 70 years, and we got quite a good account of that uh, by the previous speaker, has been named the Great Acceleration by a number of scientists. In this time, the human influence on the planet has accelerated at an unprecedented rate. As all we all know from practical experience, at some point you have to stop accelerating. Not only will you burn too much fuel, you will also most likely cr crash if you continue. Don't get me wrong, I know and I feel that the great acceleration has brought incredible, incredible progress. As a whole, we humans are doing much better than ever before, which is both great and a problem. And this problem is fundamentally connected to the way of life. Some call it the imperial lifestyle. The West is leading today and to which of the rest of the world is also aspiring now. And it's impossible for everyone to live this lifestyle. Thus I believe we are at, are at a turning point and that the future cannot be projected linearly from where we stand now. Growth, acceleration, more connectivity, the price at some point is just too high for the yields. Instead, I think that the future will, at some point, we actually will travel a little bit less. We will grow less. I think that some of the global chains that connect the world will partly break down. Others will remain. The future will be quite complex and multifaceted. But I think that flying will, in this future, become more questioned. It will also become, in some parts, more exclusive. I think that local economies will become more important. And I think that both of these points are highly relevant for airports and I would like to keep the, you, you to keep this in mind for later. So after this small excursion, I would like to come back to the airports themselves. Why as urbanists were we even interested in them? And what is uh, special about the European airports? Because we essentially studied eight European airports in the book. The airplane is, as we all know, the last wave of, of transportation. And we can observe that all of these waves of transportation have always fundamentally uh, changed our lives and our cities as well. But why air travel is expanding around the world, as you can see on the left, in Europe we uh, observe a certain saturation. So on the right you can see that on the top graph the foundation of new airports has almost stopped. Uh, Germany is trying to, uh, to open up a new airport since many years and is not uh, getting it. Um, um, and airports are becoming more integrated into the urban structure, the graphs which you can see at the bottom, so we have more links to the airports. So essentially we thought this would be an interesting point to have a closer look. For our research we chose eight European airports, all of them are among the 20 largest in terms of passengers, 
They were founded at very different times. The first one, Amsterdam, around 1914. The last one, Munich, at the bottom right, uh, around 20, 1992. And they have gone, undergone different stages of alteration, most of them trying to get into the parallel runway system at some point um, or close to it. And it's really fascinating to see how these infrastructures changed over the time and their urban surroundings as well. Um, we traveled a lot into these urban surroundings of these airports and conducted photographic portraits, which you can also find in the uh, book and compare. Um, we found urbanistically intriguing things. We found uh, a contrast between the highly designed, uh, process-optimized airports and their sometimes very improvised um, and chaotic surroundings. So you see here four photos from Amsterdam with uh, a Sippo Plaza on the top left, which some of you may know, but also on the right, happy parking, which is kind of a valid parking uh, uh, in the periphery of the airport. Some people storing uh, um, uh, trailers. Uh, and also, uh, we noticed a lot of infrastructure connecting the airport to its surrounding, uh, a highly uh, a rapidly uh, developing uh, urban structure. There's the contrast between the open, sometimes empty landscape, it's a great potential, and the intensely used terminal areas, and the collision of the office parks, which are kind of the signs of globalization, and uh, other urban structures around them, which are more traditional and more like from the, uh, from the cities that were there before. It proved quite difficult to uh, find a frame of reference for really researching these areas. Um, airports have multiple, multiple effects on multiple scales. They reach out quite far into their uh, urban surroundings. In fact, we made out uh, um, five different effects on the urban structure. Territorial, in the territory of the airport. Aviation, then the flows, the allocation effects around the airport, and the urbanization, which stretches out three hours drive from the airport or farther away. We found that airport noise, which is obviously an uh, aviation effect, uh, was urbanistically maybe the most unique feature of the airport as a traffic infrastructure. You can clearly see on this map, it's Zurich. Uh, you can see the noise of the airport, the noise of the highways and the railways. And you can see that uh, here we have something that is of a completely new dimension in terms of its effect on the urban structure. So, we choose this 55 decibel noise control where restrictions get quite strict in Europe at least um, as a frame of urbanistic uh, observation. We have discovered in this observation eight very different and surprisingly large noise landscapes. Some of them are quite urban, such as London and Paris. Um, most of them are divided into very different zones and some of them are strongly coined by agriculture, such as Munich, which was positioned outside of the city. We made out four different conditions, urban, suburban, park, I will come back later to this, and agricultural, and they are all combined in these different noise landscapes. Noise landscapes have very different shapes, as you've seen on the last slide. And it's clear to most of you, I guess, that all these shapes are caused by the runway layouts. So that led us to a short investigation on sorting the uh, 100 largest European airports like butterflies uh, in terms of their runway layout and in terms of their run runway numbers. Um, and we discovered that Sripo, uh, one of our main cases with six runways, is quite an exception. It's the only one in Europe that looks that way. And it causes the most interesting noise landscape because it's kind of like a wheel uh, spinning in different directions. Runways determine the flight paths, and these uh, also depend on factors such as predominant winds, operational restrictions. Uh, they also have a margin of flexibility. So these flight paths are the next step towards the noise landscape. They are constantly subject to optimization, deregulation, and nego negotiation among airport and aviation authorities and the municipalities and the population around them. As a result of such negotiations, one of the results, so we did that for each of the airports, we researched what are the legal implications of this noise landscape. In Zurich, we have a very interesting thing. It's called the Zurich Flight Index, 
It was created at a certain point to top off the number of people affected by noise. You see the graph at the very bottom right. They defined an area where uh, everybody should kind of uh, try to uh, not have any more population growth uh, and to not have any more people affected by the noise. And as you can see by the graph go going up to the right, the instrument somehow didn't prove very efficient in doing that. I think there's still a lot of trial and error going on in these noise landscapes, uh, trying to negotiate between airport and the surroundings. And I think that these tools are just uh, the beginning of a complex techno technologically advanced negotiation me mechanisms around airports. Uh, we experience changes in noise monitoring, in mapping technology, GIS, and um, uh, just an example, when we presented the book in Zurich, the uh, boss of the federal, uh, 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 federal Swiss Federal Aviation Authority told us that they're actually building a 3D uh, um, interactive model of the airport and its surroundings, modeling each airplane's noise impact on surroundings, uh, which should be implemented in the next years to negotiate exactly uh, these flight paths with the surroundings. <coughs> and I think that this will come uh, little by little in all of the airports. We have one of our authors in this book, uh, Peter Ortner. He looked closer at Heathrow. And it's also an interesting example um, how air, air, airport noise is a, is a mediator between uh, uh, the community, the airport operator, and the governments. Uh, also, he uh, noticed an increasing um, automation and digitization of the measurement of noise. So on the left, you see the airplane approaching. And on the right, you see um, as the so-called so RepTrack software. Um, you can uh, online look. Uh, if you heard a plane overhead, what kind of plane was it, how loud was it, and you can even on the website immediately um, uh, place a, um, place a uh, noise complaint. So, and also they experimented with bundling noise over certain flight paths and got quite bad results because people were not used to the planes flying so concentrated over them. So I would like to argue here that these developments make it important to think the airport as an infrastructure together with its impact space and that this is also a design question. What are the chances of this approach? What do we find in these noise landscapes? There are many things I could show. Just one example, it's very interesting between in Amsterdam, uh, the, the noise actually uh, prevented the cities of uh, Harlem and Amsterdam of growing together, instead they uh, ecology of fun parks developed between the two cities. So you've got gotcha, you've got some racetracks and so on in between. So you've got something that these cities wouldn't have if the noise landscape would not be there. In other parts you have data centers, you have got office parks, you've got golf courses, international golf courses directly connected to the airport. Um, you've got prisons, this kind of thing. And as you can see, you also have a, a dominance of traffic infrastructure. I think I will skip this part and I'll just say that we made out patterns that are similar to all of these noise landscapes, but I also would like to say that all of them are quite individual, like the individual cities. So none of them is like the other. Amsterdam is also an interesting in the respect that what I call embracing tension, that there are several projects in its surroundings that embrace this tension between the airport and, and, uh, and the surrounding area. Um, which is also kind of a little bit ground in the Dutch planning system and the Dutch system of communicating about the built environment together. So for example, there's a noise park which takes the airport noise as an idea to uh, create a landscape. Um, also around the airport there are kind of uh, closed loops, um, uh, um, logistic parks developing which lead try to take sustainability to the next level. And I think that in the future that I've sketched, and which is, has some very unknown aspects to us, the embracing of this tension is essential for airports. So, and I think that one of the way, ways to think them would not to think them as infrastructures that are competing in a global capitalistic system, but as infrastructures that are serving the local societies in the best possible way something that will be demanded at one point or another. I mean, the other thing will automatically happen 
uh, anyway. Last slide, Max. I'm trying to conclude with some central points. Designing better and smarter airports is important. Designing impact spaces, impact spaces is equally important, especially in the future where airports have to be much better connected and reconciled with stronger local economies and communities. I think that noise landscapes will be perceived as parts of the airports in a changed world, that complex negotiation tools are already developing and that compensation will even play a bigger role than today and it can also spark some very interesting things in noise landscapes. Uh, at the moment, uh, the half of Germany is discussing about the dying of insects and for example, why could not an airport uh, introduce some insect sanctuaries in these large areas, uh, agricultural areas around it, uh, making a positive impact. Um, and this tension between ecological, economical concerns between noise and habitation, I think it has to be embraced and not ignored, and it has to be addressed positively. And last but not least, I think that we can look forward to seeing these noise landscapes in the future, um, because I think they will be even more interesting than they were today, uh, were, are today to us, discovering them, because um, yeah, each, uh, each traffic infrastructure which, which has influenced our cities has caused a new city form to appear. And uh, I think that the noise landscapes will also be a new city form and it's, yeah, it's, a, it's critical how we uh, design this. That's it. <laughs>